Hello everyone, and welcome back to an introduction to Programming Remastered. In the previous episode, we went over the many types of variables that you can employ in your program. Today's episode, we'll be going further into variables, specifically focusing on how variables are created, referenced, and manipulated in our program. To begin, let's look at creating variables. In order to create a variable, you have to initialize it, which basically means that the computer creates a little space in its memory that stores the variable name and whatever contents you give to it. In the last video, we used a cardboard box example to describe the way the variable stores information. Going off of this example, you can think of the computer's memory as a storage facility. In this storage facility, you store all kinds of data. Imagine I created a variable called name, in which I store the string null pointer exception. This cardboard box would be labeled name and would contain a piece of paper with null pointer exception written on it. Whenever I want to take a look inside the name box and check out its contents, I could very easily do that and see that at this point, name holds the value null pointer exception. The computer's memory stores this cardboard box and allows you to change and access it whenever you want. If I am looking for the value of a variable, I can simply call it by its name, and the computer will allow you to access the data stored in that variable and use it however you see fit. Programming allows us to do something pretty useful with these variables that we create. Let's say we created a second variable called channel name but instead of declaring its value to be null pointer exception, we instead declare it to be equal to the original name variable. This action does not create a new space in the computer's memory for this variable. Instead, this creates an alias, which has many more implications than we will touch upon in this video. However, for now, think of it as an extra label for the cardboard box already labeled name. Rather than there being a whole extra cardboard box labeled channel name, your computer will simply understand that when you call channel name, you are referring to the same location in the memory that the name variable already points to. Aliasing is usually done to save space in your computer's memory when dealing with multiple variables that you want to have the same value. However, be careful when changing the value of one of these aliased variables, as it can impact the other variables as well. Variables can also be changed throughout your program. For a real-world example, think of your age as an integer variable. Say that right now, you are 30 years old. This value does not stay constant throughout your entire life, of course. If you celebrate a birthday, you will increase your age by 1. To do this, you simply have to reference your age value and increment it by 1. The most straightforward way to achieve this is to write age equals age plus 1, or age plus equals 1, or even in some languages, age plus plus. Using the cardboard box example, think of this as accessing the box labeled age, taking out the piece of paper that says 30, erasing the 30, and writing instead 31, and placing that back in the box. Doing this, we are able to easily update the data associated with the variable in response to a variety of stimuli. For example, if you were working on an RPG, your character will likely have a variety of stats associated with it, such as its level, health, attack, mana, etc., that will change as the player progresses throughout the game. By storing these values as variables, this can be done quite simply. It is important to remember that variables are nothing more than pointers to data stored within your computer's memory. So while we update the data that a variable points to, its location in the memory remains constant. As you begin your program and you initialize variables, you essentially create new cardboard boxes with data stored within them to be placed within the storage facility, which, when your code is finished, will all be erased from the computer's memory, as you no longer have any use for it. 
Another useful thing that you can do with variables is to add, subtract, multiply, divide, and even modulus them. We've gone over how all these operators work on different types of data in previous videos, so if you are at all confused, make sure to check those out. Addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division mainly work between integer variables. However, you could multiply a string by an integer or add strings together. For more details on string operations, once again, make sure to look at our video on that. However, this is important because many times you will be performing arithmetic on variables. For example, imagine you are making a calculator app. First, you let the user input two numbers, the first of which is stored in a variable called num1, and the second of which would be stored in a variable called num2. You can then do whatever operation you need on these numbers. You can multiply num1 by num2, add them together, subtract num2 from num1, or whatever operation the user selects. Keep in mind that writing num1 times num2 has no effect on num1 or num2. In fact, unless you return this value or store it in its own variable, these operations don't really have any effect on anything. It's as if they never happened. Instead, you would have to store num1 times num2, for example, in a variable called result, and then have your program print out this result to the user. The last topic that we will be covering in today's video is the naming conventions of a variable. This may seem unimportant, but it's best to use standard naming conventions for variables so that you, and whoever else may have to, will have an easier time reading your code. Furthermore, there are some names that you should avoid giving a variable, as they may result in an error or simply result in your code not working the way that you had intended. Firstly, the variable's name must be one continuous string. That means that it cannot have any spaces in it. If you want to give a variable a two or more word name, then you will have to combine them into one somehow. Programmers have their own preference as to how to do this, and the standard convention may vary between languages. But for now, we will use camel case. Camel case is a way of naming variables in which you do not capitalize the first word, but capitalize every word that follows. For example, the variable named player score would look like this. You can look on the screen now for more examples of camel case variables. Regardless of how you name the variable, it's best to avoid naming it the name of a built in function or value as that is bound to cause issues, even if the compiler does not throw an error. For example, naming your variable true, or false, or print, will usually cause an error, but if it does not, it will definitely throw off your program when you try to use this variable, or the built-in function or value whose name it is stealing. That does it for today's video. If you enjoyed, be sure to like and subscribe so that you don't miss any of our other videos that are coming out soon. The next video in this series will be going over conditional statements, which are enormously important for both simple programs and very complex ones. With that said, thanks for watching.